We're gonna open up Asus's Tough Gaming Series motherboard, the X570 Plus with Wi-Fi. Let's see what's inside. All right, first off, let's take a look at the packaging. Um, it's the Tough Gaming X570 Plus with Wi-Fi motherboard. Uh, first off, this motherboard with the Wi-Fi is $199. You can get it for $10 less if you exclude the Wi-Fi uh, for $189.99. I think for $10, it's worth the additional uh, feature. Uh, it is uh, 802.11ac, so at least it's uh, semi-current. I wish it was AX, but that's okay. Um, they're going to point all over this box that this is Asus Aorus Sync compatible or ready, which I don't know if that's a selling feature or a something that tells you to stay away from it as Asus's Aura software is not the uh, most impressive. It is PCIe 4.0 ready, which hopefully at some point will actually be utilized for much. Right now it really isn't outside of uh, just the um, storage, which we'll see if it's really worthwhile in the future right now. I don't know that it really is. Obviously, it's got HDMI, uh, DTS sound. Uh, it is compatible with AMD Crossfire, which, you know, I would hope it would be. But again, it seems like things are kind of going away from the dual cards uh, due to slightly due to cost, slightly due to lack of support, so on and so forth. But at least you can do it. It is the X570 chipset, which I would hope, as the name of the board implies, would support. Uh, it is compatible with your AMD. Ryzen 3000 desktop series processors, which again would be the point of this. And um, yay for AMD, they're celebrating for 50 years of uh, innovation as they like to call it, which I guess in some ways is true. For your back IO, you do have a display port, an HDMI port. Obviously this is in the event you uh, have integrated graphics on your, uh, if you're using an APU. Uh, you do have your PS2 combo port, which I don't know if anybody uses that anymore. Uh, I don't think I even have a keyboard for that, or a mouse for that matter. Uh, it does have the one LAN RJ45 port. Uh, this is a little disappointing. I would like to see at least a 5G port, port on there, if not a 10G. I think that would be that should be pretty standard by now. It doesn't cost that much more to integrate the higher and uh, faster LAN ports, but again, that's my opinion. So one two by two Wi-Fi module. Again, that is 802.11ac compatible. Three USB 3.2 Gen 2, two Type A and one Type C port. So that is nice. Four 3.2 Gen 1 ports, and it's also got your uh, five audio jacks and one optical SPDIF out. SPDIF. SPDIF. As far as USB goes, you've got the three uh, USB 3.2 Gen 2 at the back. You're going to have uh, two that are type A, one that's type C, six USB 3.2 Gen 1 ports, and then you're going to have, uh, which two are on the board, four at the back panel, and then four 2.0 ports, and they're actually on the board itself. That is nice because there are things that still need to have that, or, uh, well, should use that anyway. It's using the uh, L8200A Realtek LAN. Um, Yay, Asus Tur it's got the Asus Turboland utility. You know, that may or may not be useful. Uh, we already covered the Wi-Fi. It's got a 2.4 and a 5 gigahertz frequency. Again, it is dual band, so that's nice. Bluetooth 5.0, so that's uh, at least recent, or current, I should say. Uh, it does have decent audio on here. Um, the S1200A 8-channel high-definition audio codec, uh, and then just kind of outlines that. Yes, it's got Asus Aura Sync. Again, that doesn't really mean too much to me right now. I'm, I'm to the point where I'm getting a little tired of, of dealing with the headaches and the problems that arise from that. Um, the Tough Gaming Alliance get the Gen 4 PCIe support, PCIe support, not PCIA. I'm not sure what that would even be. And then they have their advertisement for their gaming solution. One thing I do like as I know it, because I will end up using it, is a 20% off cable mod custom cables. So you get a coupon uh, in there. Well, I'm sure we'll find that and pull that out. 
It does support the uh, AM4 socket uh, specifically for the um, uh, Gen 3 and Gen 2 Ryzen processors and it looks like it will uh, support some Gen 1 as well. Uh, chipset is X570 again as already pointed out on the front. Memory does have four DIMM slots, uh, maximum of 128 gigabyte uh, DDR4, 4400 overclocked megahertz uh, memory. It is obviously dual channel. Uh, as far as the VGA goes, it does have integrated graphics in the second and first gen AMD uh, Ryzen uh, processors yeah. for storage. You've got your two M.2 slots. They are outlined right here. And then you've got your expansion slots you're gonna have. Let's open this up here. So, pretty straightforward. We got something contained in here. Oh, there is our Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi antenna and its support stand. Our motherboard in the anti-static plastic. We're going to come back and look at that in a second here. Let's see what else we got for contents. IO shield, uh, or as the Verge likes to call it, a bracket. Or do they call it a brace? I don't really remember, but it's an IO shield, just FYI. It is not a bracket or a brace or anything else we're going to go ahead and open this because we will need this once i get this thing installed in the next video side note i do wish that was actually already on there it's nice when they're pre-installed there's not really much of a reason i don't feel to not already do that you have your um, user guide which do hold on to that because it's going to tell you things you wouldn't you'd like oh certificate of the reliability so they really believe in the durability and reliability of their tough series product. Um, they call it military grade. So in theory, this stuff should survive a little bit more hostile conditions than say your standard Strix motherboard or your prime motherboards. Oh, uh, you got a couple of SATA cables. Don't get rid of these, very important. These are the, your M.2 standoff screws. Uh, driver disc, ooh, decals, very fun. Oh, battery decals actually, interesting. And this is what I was talking about, your 20% off of cable mod cables. This I have used and I will use again. All right, get rid of the, I'm gonna turn it like this, the orientation that most of us will see it in. So here's our motherboard. First off, I do like how it looks. I understand that part of the tough gaming branding is with the yellow or almost um, almost orange accents. I personally am not a big fan of that. I wish it was just the black and gray, but that's my personal opinion. Uh, you may have a different opinion. I think if I uh, when I do this uh, build off this, my lights are probably going to be based upon that yellow orange color, and then or maybe some whites. We'll figure that out. But uh, here's the board. Now they do call it the Tough Gaming Armor first off, which I mean it does look nice. It is plastic. <laughs> I'm not sure how tough plastic is. Power does have an eight pin and an ancillary four pin, which is nice. This is a twelve plus two vrm phase design for um, power delivery i'm excited to get uh, a uh, 3000 series chip processor in this and see how it handles everything and maybe even get some overclocking done we'll see um, it does have fan headers up here along with a standard 12 volt rgb header you've got a 5 volt rgb header over here so you have this will cover both your addressable and your non-addressable non -addressable RGB. 24 pin, you get your uh, USB uh, 3.2 Gen 1 uh, input. You've got your SATA inputs, your X570 chipset with its fan. So I am curious to see how noisy this is once I do get a build going with this. You do have two 
uh, M.2 slots. You've got one here and you've got one under here which also has a heat sink over it. I'm going to go ahead and use my iFixit school screwdriver here, not a school driver. That would be a little weird. And let's remove this heat sink. And see, yes, it does have a thermal pad underneath, so that's nice. I'll help keep the uh, M.2 cool. So there's your additional uh, M.2, and that would be your primary one, is what I would use it as. turn this board a little bit and come down here so you can get a little better look at things. Um, let's just do this. We do have some additional, so along with these four SATAs over here, you've got four more SATAs directly on the board at the bottom here, which is kind of interesting. You have an additional 12 volt um, RGB. You have your uh, front audio. Uh, we do have some USB 2.0 fan headers. Uh, you have your two by one PCIe's. You have your main um, or your dual card if you need to use it. Uh, if you're by 16, obviously when you put them, if you have two cards in there, they are each by eight at that point. Uh, this one does have the additional protection. Uh, that is typically your main port being used for your graphics card so it is reinforced uh, i would have liked to have seen the second one reinforced as well um, but you know whatever neither here nor there you do have your audio chipset on here it's pretty clean you have additional fan headers right here and they're assuming they're in a good spot if you do have an uh, let's say an all-in-one pump uh, cooler so uh, that is very nice and then we're going to come here to the back get a look at the rear I.O. That again, I do wish had its I.O. shield already installed, but it does not. You have your old school um, P2 port. You do have a USB Type-C right here. I like that. You have USB 3s right here. HDMI and Display Port. You have your uh, dual channel Wi-Fi hookups right here for 802.11ac. Some additional USB. You have your LAN port. You have your audio hookup as well as your SPDIF. 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 Digital audio signal. <laughs> I used to do some uh, audio recording, so that is an important item to use. I just I like calling it SPDIF because it sounds fun to say. Yes, I'm a little ridiculous, but that's all right. And then the back is nice and clean. Obviously, I don't recommend playing around or handling the back as much as possible. You don't want to cause a, any potential damage to the back of the motherboard. Overall, this is a very clean motherboard. Uh, the, speed, the features on this are simple. This is not a top-end, all-inclusive feature set for motherboards. However, this does have a lot of the basics and then some. Again, the fact that it adds the Wi-Fi is a nice touch. I don't buy a motherboard based upon it having it or not having it, but if I have a price point different where, again, for 10 bucks, it was worth it to me to add this to it. Um, and most likely on this one, I mean, I'm not too concerned about having the second PCIe uh, slot, slot for uh, a second uh, graphics card but it, that is nice that the support is there for it uh, again most people now worth one the cost of the current graphics cards and to the power that they do have i mean it used to be that you'd have to have two graphics card cards uh, in sli or crossfire in order to play your triple a titles at the frame rates that you wanted to play them at um, that's not really the case anymore you just have to spend a buttload of money on one really good card uh, pretty straightforward. So, simple unboxing video, just a quick overview of what the feature set of uh, this motherboard is. Uh, at the price point for $199 or $189, 
without the Wi-Fi. I believe that this to be a good valued X570 motherboard. To me, the only reason to go to the X570 is really two reasons. The main one, if you are actually going to utilize the higher speeds of the PCIe Gen 4 simply for the M.2 memory that's available for it, right now that's the only, I guess, true feature that exists on X570 that doesn't really exist on uh, the 470 motherboards. No, and, and the 450 and so on. Now, they are supposed to have better power delivery as well uh, to help with the cooling uh, of your, not just the X, uh, the 3700X, which I really haven't seen much of an issue with that. Again, I've got my 3700X running on an X370 motherboard. It's the Crosshair 6 Hero. And that thing is running great. But more so for that 3900X and maybe even that 3950 if that ever actually comes out. Um, but I would say that's kind of secondary at this point. To me, there's a couple X570 motherboards that are interesting. I would say, personally, I'm more in line of the X470 stuff. Save some money. There's some great motherboards on the X470 and the B450 that, that will work, work amazingly well uh, for your Ryzen 3000 series processors. This, however, at only $199, which I know isn't cheap, but relative compared to the rest of the X570 mother line with the feature set that you get on this motherboard, I would say that this is a very good value. Outside of the aesthetics, which the only thing that really I'm not a fan of is the yellow slash gold accents that are on the motherboard. I just wish companies would stay to a black or a gray motherboard, you know, something real neutral and let the consumer... Um, do what they want to for uh, theming it out uh, with lighting and so on and so forth because uh, it kind of limits you in some um, areas when they uh, pre-choose the colors for you. Anyway, um, compared to what else is out there in its price point, there's a couple from MSI that are interesting. There's a couple from Aorus that are interesting. Um, outside of that, again, I really I'm more of the type that's going to say stick with your X470 and your B450 motherboard. But for $199, this is a good value. This is going to be getting installed here in a uh, build coming up here that we will feature next week. Um, just a simple Ryzen 3000 series build that uh, will be a decent price point for gaming and we will cover that. But hopefully today's video was good. Hopefully you like it, liked it. If you did, hit that thumbs up button for me. If you didn't like it, you know what else to do. Hopefully it's not that. Please hit that subscribe button for me and we'll see you in the upcoming videos. Have a good one.